Hi, and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast, we're going to look at the fundamentals of programming in Python, particularly uh, how we handle data, specifically numbers, variables, and functions. So the objectives of today's screencast. So firstly, we're going to take a look at numbers. So we're going to look at how they're represented and manipulated in Python, and the kind of operations that can be used with them. Then we're going to take a look at the, the concept of variables. And finally, we're going to look at what functions are and how they're used in Python. All right, so we'll start by running uh, Spider, where we'll, as usual, make a new blank folder and we'll save it in our screencast directory as screencast data numbers variables functions .py. okay so to start we're going to start by thinking about python in a way that will hopefully be familiar to everybody and that's like a calculator so we can definitely use it that way so for example we can type print 2 plus 2 and if we save it and run it, and if we look down here at our output, you can see the number four. So we can see that the Python's aware of the concept of numbers and on some um, standard operations that you can use with numbers. So let's take a look at a few more. So now we can do print two times two, do multiplication, print two divided by two for division, uh, print 2 to the power of 2 for exponentiation. Okay, if we save it again and run it again, now if we look at our output, we have the output of 2 plus 2, 2 times 2, 2 divided by 2, and 2 to the power of 2. So we can also type these as decimals. So for example, we could do 2 to the power of 3, and if we save and run, you can see that we have the answer here, 8. Okay, so all this is pretty standard uh, calculator sort of fare. So programming starts to get much more powerful once we introduce the concept of variables. So by using variables, we're able to store and refer to data during the operation of our program. So to make it concrete, let's say we have three apples and two oranges. So we can start by writing something like apples equals three. Okay, so what we've done here is we've um, created a variable. So the first thing we did, we gave it a name. So here we called it apples. Then we use the equal sign. Then we specify what we want it to refer to. So in this case, the number three. So we can call variables pretty much whatever we want. There are some restrictions, such as there can't be any spaces, or it can't start with a number, or it can't be any sort of command that, that Python knows about. But in for most situations, we can call it something, something meaningful. Okay, so we've created our variable called apples. So now let's make one for oranges. So you can see here we've gone down to a new line and we've uh, created a variable called oranges, and we say it equals the number two. All right, so now we have our two variables. We can add them together. So we could do print apples plus oranges. Now, if we save this, we can run it, and we can see we've got the answer here, five. So it's taken the, um, the value we've got in the variable apples, which is three, the value we've got in the variable oranges, which is two, add them to, added them together to give us five. So this, by using variables, we can also uh, reuse them for, for other calculations. So say if we also want to do apples times oranges. And again, if we save it and run it, we'll see that now we've got uh, six here in the second line of output because we've done three times two. Okay, so that's variables. Now we're going to take a, a quick look at, at functions. At first, uh, let's introduce another concept, 
And that's the idea of how we can add some more functionality to our Python code by using a statement called import. All right, so, so let's say we wanna generate some random numbers. This is a, a concept that comes up surprisingly often in day-to-day -day programming. So the developers of Python have included a bunch of functionality regarding random numbers in an extra package called random. So to make that available, we use the import statement. So before we want to use it, we type import, and then we type what we want to, what we want to import, in this case called random. Okay, so now we have um, the functionality associated with random that we can access using what's called dot notation. So first, let's consider a function that's actually called random. So now if we type randval, so this is our variable, I'm just calling it randval, I could have called it um, a number of things, equals random to be this um, package we just imported, dot random. Okay, so now we've started to access the function. So to learn how we can use it, we can position our cursor at the end of the statement, like it is here. Now if we press the keys on the keyboard, hold down control and press I, you can see that the help window over here has changed to give us some um, indication of what this function does and how we can use it. So we can see that this function um, returns a random value in the interval zero and one. Okay, so you can see it doesn't also doesn't need any other information. So we can finish this by open and close uh, parentheses. Okay, so let's walk through what will happen here when we run this. So we have a function here, random, which is part of the random package that we imported. So this function will execute and generate a random number between zero and one. So what it generates will then be assigned to the variable called randval. So now what we can do is print randval so we can see what it's generated. Okay, so let's run this and see the output. So if we save it and run it, we can see that we've got a, a random number here in between zero and one. So of course the number that, you, that you'll see won't be the same as mine because it's a random number. And so if we can see this by, if we run it again, we'll have generated a different number. Okay, so finally, just to learn a bit more about how to use functions, let's say that instead of um, between zero and one, we want to sample a random number from a normal or Gaussian distribution. For that, we can use a different function called Gauss. So let's have looked at its help. So again, we can, we'll call it gaussval equals random.gauss in this case. Now with the per cursor positioned here, I can press control I and we can see the help for this um, particular function. So I can see that for this function, it needs a couple of extra pieces of information. First, it needs mu, so the mean of the distribution, and it needs sigma, which is the standard deviation of the sigma of the distribution. So in order to use this function, we need to provide this information, which we do as, as follows. So say if we want to sample from a, a Gaussian with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, we could do open um, parentheses, zero comma one close parentheses. Okay, so see how we've put these two numbers separated by commas inside the, the parentheses, just like it's asking for here in the help. Okay, so again, this function will assign a value to gauss val. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so now if we save this and run it, we can see that now it's generated, a, rather than a random value from a um, zero to one interval, it's generated a random value from a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. All right, so one final thing about functions is that we can often make things easier on ourselves and on anybody else reading our code 
if we re re refer to these function parameters by name. So here we have mu and sigma as the function parameters. So previously what we did was um, implicitly signal mu and sigma by putting a zero in the first spot and a one in the second spot. So instead, what we could do is put mu equals zero and sigma equals one. So now we've explicitly specified the values that we want to give to the function. So it would also be fine to do sigma equals one, mu equals zero, because we've explicitly signaled what we want our values to map onto, the order, order doesn't matter. Okay, so let's save it and just run it just to confirm that. And you can see that again, we've, we've been able to generate this value. All right, so one final example, just to wrap this up. So in these function arguments, we can also specify variables rather than directly giving the number. So what we might want to do is just do something like Gauss mean equals zero, Gauss sigma equals one. So now we've defined these two, two variables hold the, holding the values zero and one. So now when we call the function, rather than directly specifying one, we could put Gauss sigma, and instead of explicitly saying zero, we could put Gauss mean. Okay, save it and we'll run it. Okay, again, you can see that it's um, sampled from this distribution. Okay, so let's look back on what we've covered. So first we looked at numbers and we used Python as a, a basic calculator in which we applied some fundamental operations. Then we introduced this concept of variables and we use them to store and refer to data. Finally, we looked at functions, what they are, how we use them and how we provide them with the information that they require. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.